Hi, today I will show you how to showcase your assets in Marmoset Toolbag to achieve these kind of renders, which are ready to be published on ArtStation. It is a main website where people keep their portfolios and share their work with the others. So if you're interested, let's begin the tutorial. First, export your objects from your 3D software. In my case, it's a blender. I'd like to show my sword with and without the scabbard, so I'm exporting them as separated FBXs. I'm making sure that I apply transforms before exporting to keep both models in the same place. Next, I'm exporting my textures from Substance Painter using PBR Metallic Roughness preset. Choose output location of your textures and select your texture size. I recommend using 4K textures to achieve the best results. Now go to Marmoset Toolbag and click File, Import Model or use Ctrl-I shortcut and import all of your objects. Create a new material and click the square next to Normal Map and select your Normal. Do the same with the Roughness, Diffuse and Metallic Maps. Extend the Emissive tab and select Emissive option. Import your Emissive Map too. Now drag and drop your material into your objects. As you can see, they look looking pretty weird, but all we have to do is flip your normal map by Y axis. Thanks to this, we have our objects properly imported with textures on them. Next, we will start editing our lighting starting with the ambient light. Click Sky on your Scene tab. You can use any image as a background as you want, but we will stay with the presets and select Canada Glacier. It is way too bright, so we will change our backdrop brightness to achieve darker background. I'm also lowering the brightness so the ambient light only helps with getting rid of the black empty spots and it's barely visible right now. Now let's add some main lights onto the scene. Click Add Light and change the type to Omni. Move your light closer to the object and adjust its brightness and distance. I'm also using contrasting temperature colors, orange and light blue. I like this combination, but it can be anything depends on your needs. I placed the first light on the top of the handle and I pressed Ctrl D to duplicate this light and move it a little bit lower. I did that again and moved the light to the opposite side changing its color to light blue and reducing its brightness. I also made small adjustments, duplicated one light and moved it closer to the guard to show the details of the normal map. After that, it is time to add rim lights, which are going to cut our objects from the background. I duplicated one of the lights and move it behind the sword. I also changed the type from Omni to Spot and aimed the lights from the backside of the handle and changed its brightness. Now I'm making a counter rim light, so I duplicated the blue light and placed it behind the handle too. Like before, I changed the type to spot and adjusted brightness and the angle. After that, I also adjusted the emissive map by changing its value to 3. I also duplicated the blue rim light and placed it facing to the blade to achieve a cool looking highlight. After all these steps, I made some final adjustments to the lights.
Now it's time to create a camera which will take our screenshots. Duplicate existing main camera and change its name. Reset the rotation and position under Transform tab. Move it in front of the model and change view from the camera to newly created camera front. Now we will move our camera using SWADQE keys. Our next step is setting up the post effects. I changed the field of view to 25 degrees and checked if everything looks good. I tried to adjust the vignetting but my background is too dark so I decided to go back to sky and change the backdrop brightness to a little higher value. Now our vignette is visible and we can move on to the another effects. Remember to not over sharpen your render because you can get some weird artifacts. But lower values are making your renders much crispier. You can also adjust exposure, contrast or saturation depending on your needs. I decided to add a little bit of bloom and a flare effect to achieve a nice glow on the jewel and a blade. I also added one more light on the jewel on the top of the handle. After that, I also resetted X position to have my object perfectly centered. Now go to your render settings and if you have a little bit stronger PC, you can enable high DPI. It is also a good idea to show your wireframes so you can enable them, change their color and visibility here. You can also change your shadows to higher quality and enable GI to bump the ambient light a little. I also like the Marmoset watermark, so I added it too. Now it's time to make a screenshot of our model. Turn on save frame to see the proportions of the screenshot. Move our camera to the place that you want to show. Click capture, settings and change your screenshot resolution. I recommend using higher one and then scaling it down in for example Photoshop to achieve smoother edges. After doing it, click Capture, Image and it's probably going to be saved on your desktop. You can click Image and Open to automatically open your screenshot and check the quality. You can change proportions to vertical and take screenshots. I also rotated and duplicated my object to show it with and without discovered. This operation requires to adjust the lights too. After taking a screenshot, I enabled wireframe and took it again. Now I decided to take a screenshot for YouTube thumbnail. I duplicated my front camera to copy all the effects and move it a little to show the sword from the perspective view.
After all these steps, you should be able to have some renders ready to be published on ArtStation. If you're interested in full course about creating this sword, subscribe the channel, because it's coming soon. Cheers!